Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning and good evening, whatever you are. I hope you've been enjoying our Dev Camp. My name is Alexis Christofoidides. I am the team lead for MetaOS. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the OS itself from a top-down perspective, its main components, uh, the work that we did to combine them, and uh, features that MetaOS and the Meta board and Meta platform provide from you, for you um, that you can use. Um, so I'm excited to go through these subjects with you. Um, mostly we're gonna talk about the components, uh, a little bit about how to use uh, configuration files to use advanced OS features, such as uh, um, hardware watchdogs for your app and sleep and wake. And I uh, will talk a little bit about the constraints of the Metal platform, the Metal board and the Metal OS, um, so as to help developers understand the, uh, how to think about building uh, an app that is has full access to C Sharp and .NET, but at the same time has, as of course, a small, low power, um, um, low energy using CPU, um, Wi-Fi um, at the same um, at the same level, low power, and um, and limited memory, uh, very importantly. So let's go through what are the main components of MetaOS. We've done a lot of work and there's a lot of custom code in MetaOS, but we have used as our basis uh, industry standard open source components for providing the services that a full Internet of Things over the system needs. Um, um, speaking from, core, from a course perspective and not and naming every component, our main components are Metal BL, uh, a custom-made bootloader, uh, Nadex, an open-source OS kernel, real-time OS kernel, Mono, the, uh, an open-source .NET runtime engine, and Bed TLS, uh, cryptography, a modern cryptography library, and Metacore, our um, our sort of layer between the native operating system and the C Sharp app world that we present to you to uh, create your solution in. So starting from the bootloader, there's not much to say here because most of the time the bootloader does nothing but being the first thing to start when the, your device starts and then proceed to initiate, initialize the rest of the operating system. However, this is where the magic happens for over-the-air updates. Uh, if you're using Metal Cloud in uh, your solution, um, after Metal Cloud uh, downloads an update, it's a bootloader that will update the OS uh, and also handle failures that can happen because of corrupted file or uh, power failures. Uh, it can uh, validate the binaries that have been flashed properly. It can roll back failed updates. Um, so that's where OTA magic happens. Uh, and most of the time, it you know, normal execution, it doesn't and it just very quickly uh, boots the system. Straight into Nutix, which is a real time OS kernel used um, widely in embedded systems. Um, it's very well maintained, actively maintained to this day, provides many features for embedded devices at very low cost when it comes to using memory and using CPU. This is where we get our task scheduler, how we switch between threads, our memory allocator, uh, file system, our networking stack, um, aside from actual drivers uh, is in Nadex. Nadex provides power man management features and Nadex is where um, low level features for the STM32 processor on the Meadow uh, exist and can be enabled. Uh, the ethernet driver is also here. Um, as you may know already, our higher level drivers are developed in Meadow Foundation. They are in C Sharp. They're part of our C Sharp ecosystem, but some things can only be done on, on native level and uh, Nodex handles that. And many, many of our, our advanced features like SPI, uh, upcoming features like CAN and SPI DMA are up to Nodex to provide and support. 
Uh, moving on, the next thing that basically runs after Natix has fully booted and initialized and configured the system is Mono. And from the app developer's perspective, Mono uh, is what runs your C Sharp and F Sharp code. Uh, we'll talk about meta, the Meta Core layer in a bit, but your, your app, your C Sharp code is loaded into Mono and interpreted or uh, made into just in time um, code generated code and executed, run into uh, if you're already familiar with the net on net environment and you understand that this means that we have automated automatic garbage collection. Uh, so it's it, the net runtime is uh, a fully uh, fully capable, fully standard uh, .NET runtime. It's uh, owned and supported by Microsoft. It's fully open source uh, uh, and follows the latest uh, .NET versions. So what you can expect from Mono is full access to all .NET features, reflection, dynamic code, full GC, um, just as you would expect on a Xamarin app, which also uses Mono or um, some Unity apps or uh, desktop.net. Um, moving on, we have embed TLS. Uh, the app code never directly uh, talks to embed TLS, but it's a very useful industry standard library for embedded devices that provides cryptographic services, uh, you know, such as the RSA um, cryptographic functions and AES. Uh, but uh, practically what this is uh, used for is to provide to you, the user, uh, the ability to do TLS collection safely. It handles all of that uh, as a crypto layer over uh, that Mono uses to, um, to enable the SSL stream class. So if you go to .NET and you try to use SSL stream, embed TLS handles that, and that's how you get transparent, um, secure connections in uh, in Meadow and Mono. Um, and this is also used for uh, the, the, sec the secret generation for Meadow Cloud. So just creating the key pair that um, Meadow Cloud sort of um, and the device exchange uh, in order to have secure authentication and communication from then on. Uh, finally, the Meadow Core is the API layer for the operating system. All of the features I mentioned above have to go through uh, Mono and Meadow.core. Sometimes some go directly like um, file system access, or as I mentioned before, TLS. Those are bound directly to Mono. And Meadow Core provides access to configuring and sending uh, signals over pins. Uh, it provides the, the base for all the Meadow Foundations drivers to, uh, um, to work. And it's in, it's in general how anything in the .NET world actually does embedded work aside from connecting to the internet and doing the logic inside. So anything that's not very standard .NET, anything that's not just printing to the console or communicating to the internet, like reading through sensors, eventually goes to the Metacore API. Um, it also drives the app lifecycle. We have another session for that, but in, in general, your app is loaded and its lifecycle is managed by Metacore. Metacore calls, calls, calls your initialized function, then it calls your run function, it handles exceptions and error reporting uh, for your app. It also handles logging and tracing. Um, and finally, it's also responsible for through configuration, uh, enabling metal cloud authentication. Um, the device, if provisioned, will uh, use a metal core service to connect in the background and receive messages over their updates, etc. Um, so Moving on from the main components of MetaOS, let's talk a little bit about some advanced features you can get um, if, through, uh, through using MetaCore um, API and MetaCore's configuration files. Uh, starting with a very important one for embedded devices, how do you uh, enable sleep and wake? Uh, how do you use sleep and wake for your app? Um, 
as, as I can show, as I'm showing it to you here, it's very simple using the uh, meadow namespaces loaded up. Um, we can use a device object to just call a static method, giving it a very standard way, in, in a very standard .net way, giving it a time span for how long to sleep. Um, and that's it. The, all, all the STM32 processor will shut down uh, and wake up um, after the uh, allotted time span. Uh, there's not much to it other than that. We have um, handlers that where you can put if, um, actions that you want to happen before or after sleep. Um, but in general, you can expect that as soon as you press sleep, all threads or, or running threads for your app will stop running. And as soon as you wake up, all of them will return to um, processing. It's, uh, there's nothing more to it than that. It's very uh, transparent. Another advanced feature that MetaOS provides uh, on our hardware is uh, MetaWatch Dock. It's, um, it's, it's a hardware feature where um, the CPU itself needs um, validation from the running app um, yeah, via way of sort of tapping a bit inside the, the memory of that uh, of the app still running and app still being uh, alive. This is very useful for high reliability uh, applications as you can understand. If we, for some reason, get it to a hang uh, in the application, we wanna be able to detect that. And the most reliable way to handle an unknown hang is really to just um, detect that it happened and reset the device. So the idea here is very simple. You enable the watchdog in your C-sharp initialization code. And somewhere in your code also, you have um, a loop running in a thread, waiting a few seconds, uh, fewer seconds at the watchdog uh, time span, the watchdog period, and just sort of uh, petting the watchdog, as we like to say. And um, that takes care of, in a very basic way, uh, of hangs at any level. Um, there's a lot you can handle in C-sharp. C-sharp has full error handling. You're always supposed to handle exceptions uh, via try-catch, uh, even in uh, background tasks. However, in a better systems, anything can happen. Maybe there was a, a little bit of a drop in, uh, in power and the CPU is uh, misbehaving. You do, there's no... There's no prevention of uh, hangs completely in any uh, in any platform, so it's very important to have sort of like the, the lowest level of safety against uh, infinite loop and hangs that um, put your uh, put your device out of commission. Um, another thing we can do with uh, Mono as a .NET runtime here is that we support two execution modes: uh, the so-called JIT just in time execution mode and interpreted mode. Um, the just-in-time mode um, is our, our sort of best performing in, the, uh, in general purpose applications. How it works is that the first time your C-sharp or F-sharp method is uh, ran, is uh, it is compiled by Mono into native code. Uh, native code is generated and, that net, and from then on, that native code is what's run. Um, of course, generating native code uh, is faster than interpreter mode in almost all cases. However, the generation of the code is something that for some applications is worth considering. The first time you call a method, uh, there is a code generation delay. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that later, just to remind you that uh, uh, that might affect some cases, some time sensitive cases when you use some methods. Uh, and it, um, but most of the time, JIT is a faster way to run your app. But we also provide interpreter. Uh, it's a little bit smoother operation, but um, significantly slower, about five times slower. JIT is five times faster than interpreter. Uh, but very simply, if you want to enable that uh, and switch from the default of JIT, just go to your Meta config YAML uh, in your uh, application and add this section. Um, 
Another useful feature here for uh, provided by Metal Core, which as I've mentioned before, derives your app lifecycle, is uh, automatic restart on failure. So if we do have a .NET exception thrown, uh, either unexpected or because you do want your app to shut down, um, we just provide that for you um, as a service that if we receive an exception at the basis level, so Metacore receives an exception from your app, it's floated all the way to Metacore, then Metacore will uh, perform a delay for you if you'd like, and then restart the device if you'd like. If you're debugging, you probably don't want this uh, mode on. If you're not debugging, you probably do want your uh, device to restart. Uh, so now let's talk a little bit about the constraints of the Meta OS and the Meta board, which are sort of uh, interweaved with each other. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is an embedded platform. It's supposed to run on low power and with uh, limited resources and still providing a full .NET environment. So none of what I'm going to mention is about don't use this class or don't use this part of .NET. Uh, we'll ask you to be very lean uh, when you create your apps and cognizant of the fact that there's only 32 megabytes of RAM on the meadow, uh, and that's shared between .NET's um, garbage collected managed heap, uh, dot, uh, .NET's metadata, because we load up the app, we load all the assemblies, that uh, a lot of that data needs to also be in memory, as does the code generated by the JIT. Um, and other things like if you're using SQLite, that's... Um, you know, that's a separate library with its own uh, uh, memory budget. And uh, we use a decent amount of memory to load the TLS certificate store so we can have um, safe communication with um, internet servers. That's their standard thing to do for any device that needs to have, needs to be um, uh, on the internet securely. Um, so once again, some people who have used .NET a lot know about this, but um, it's automated ma power management as the heap starts to fill uh, from objects created. The, the garbage collector can is allowed to jump in at any time and pause all threads and um, go through the heap and remove all objects that are no longer being referenced by anything. Um, the good thing here is that your app is very secure in the sense that you will not leak memory. You will not accidentally uh, overwrite memory. Memory use is very safe in the .NET world. Uh, at the same time, you do not have full control over when things get garbage collected and disposed. Um, and we also have a 200, megabyte, uh, 200 megahertz CPU. Um, most of that is allotted straight to your app. We don't have we have very minimal background tasks, only doing things like uh, DHCP, extremely low uh, CPU usage. And Nadex provides 32 threads, uh, which are um, used by some by the OS, uh, again, mostly um, not doing much processing. And uh, as you can see here, four are used by the .NET runtime, or used by Mono, like uh, the GC. Uh, and some are given to your uh, the mono.net uh, .NET thread pool, so you can use task run. Um, you will get four threads executing a task for that. And also you can create more .NET threads manually, but always remember that uh, you will not be able to get more than 32 total. Um, so very quick about optimizing your Meadow app. The idea here is to be lean. If you're a modern C-sharp developer, you might have heard some of these things before because .NET is, uh, um, has had a major push to become more memory and CPU efficient. Um, so a lot of this might sound um, familiar. Uh, avoid allocating large buffers. That's actually metal specific. Uh, you might just you know, um, run out of memory. Avoid allocating a lot of throwaway objects. That that is a .NET modern uh, uh, modern uh, policy to not just create objects and then create them again. Avoid alloc new allocations all the time. Use span and memory types to reduce uh, temporary allocations. So when you have a buffer and you want a slice of that buffer, you can use span and memory types to sort of slice buffers and use them without duplicating. Um, 
memory, uh, duplicating data so as to manipulate it. Um, and uh, same for array pool and memory pool. These are ways to provide a, a, a manual memory allocation within .NET. So you allocate a large array pool and then people can use from there. Um, uh, I would suggest using GC Collect uh, uh, on your own to keep the, the managed heap small uh, and to, to make sure that you choose, if possible, when to uh, pause the entire app to collect uh, garbage collection, uh, to collect the um, unused objects. And if possible, warm up your methods by calling them once ahead of time uh, if you're using JIT mode. Um, all of what I mentioned is on our um, documentation online, uh, all, all of this and more and more details. Uh, so please visit there. If you have more questions, if you want more details that I have mentioned, I will be on chat to answer more questions. And thank you for being on my session and for loving Meadow. Thank you very much.